what was the turning point when you when this went from a missing persons case, run of the mill, to I think we have a serial killer? What was that moment? Uh, early on, it, it was fairly quickly actually. Um, you know, right off as soon as I looked at the, the two missing people, I thought they didn't know each other. You know, and and there was so many similarities between them, and, but yet they didn't know each other. Um, and so uh, I knew it was important to get the missing flyers out, number one, and to establish communications with people in the gay community. Uh, the gay community has their own form of communications. They have their own newsletter, et cetera. And so I was able to communicate with uh, producers of the newsletter, et cetera. And communicating with them, it only took maybe a week or so to figure out that uh, this was more than just missing people. Um, and um, initially, at the time, and things have changed since then, but at the time, if a person went missing, and the missing person investigation was handled by the uh, law enforcement officer, took the report for 72 hours, and then it might go in detectives. Um, well, um, it went that course. When it finally got into Mary Wilson, it took a little while, not my long, but a little while to convince Mary Wilson that it was more than just missing people. Um, and there was some other things that transpired. Uh, we did a lot of surveillance, various, various things that happened. When we established the informant, then um, Mary Wilson was very cooperative in moving forward. How did you come to get that informant? How did the Baumeister's one survivor come to you? Uh, communications. Uh, one of the secrets to any investigation is communicating. Um, if you don't communicate with the people, um, whether it's gay community or um, prostitutions or whatever, and it, you have to establish rapport in that community and you have to be able to establish communications. Um, going out to the gay bars and, and having people there communicating with them and building up the trust and uh, so that they will open up to communi communicate with you. Um, I think that's the, the secret to really any investigation. Um, and so we were successful almost immediately in, in coming up with an informant, so. Did he call you? Yes, yeah. Did he say, I saw the flyers, or I was talking to people at the bars, or? Uh, no, he said, he said uh, I got a story that I think you'd want to hear. <laughs> and I said, okay, tell me what it is. So he told me what it was, and I said, yeah, could you come in so I could talk to you? <laughs> and he said, sure. So and he, as it worked out, he lived not very far from my office, so uh, he came in and uh, we talked to him. At the time, also, I had a female office manager, and she was fantastic also in communicating with the gay community. And she developed a good telephone rapport. Uh, and uh, it was amazing how many people were communicating with her. And so I think uh, also, I mean, I was the overseer, the boss per se, but um, if I didn't have that group of people working for me, um, 
that I could rely upon to go out and do tasks, uh, it wouldn't have won as well as it did. You know, we'll never know, like you said, there was no mention of the murders in his note. Unfortunately, he took his life before anyone, including you, could interview him. Just from everything you learned throughout the investigation, what's your take on Baumeister, just in general? Um, well, in retrospect, when you get an opportunity to look at uh, his whole life, you can see that there was mental issues from uh, the beginning almost, uh, and mental issues that would indicate that he matched the profile of a potential serial killer. So, you know, um, um, when you look back at it, and you also find that that his uh, uh, relative father actually put him in a mental institution at one point during his lifetime. And even after he got out of there and, and some of the weird things that he did during his employment, um, you know, urinating on bosses' desks and um, other weird activities that he did at work. So you think the search needs to broaden beyond Indianapolis. Yes, and, and I know for a fact that there were victims in Dayton, Ohio, and so yes, it needs to it needs to broaden out to to uh, people that have missing relatives in other locations. What do you think it would do for the families to finally have some closure for people who do? have missing loved ones, and they have for years now, decades? Well, um, as you know, I was a victim of, uh, uh, my stepdaughter was murdered in 2016, so I know how it is to be, to have a relative murdered. Um, in my case, luckily, the case was solved and the bad guy's serving time in prison. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the same token, and uh, all of those people that over these years have wondered if their relative was one of them. Why did you never stop with this case? Why did you keep pressing forward? I guess it's in my DNA. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, I just uh, could see that if somebody didn't keep pressing that, it, it would never get resolved. And uh, now, at the time, as time went on, I got more and more cooperation from Indianapolis police. So luckily, uh, they stepped in and was uh, saving me some money in doing manpower things. Uh, so I was able to continue my close communications with them and and with the informant uh, so that we jointly could talk about um, oh, uh, procedures, et cetera, and agree to them, and they would usually go to follow them up. And occasionally they wouldn't have something that they felt like they couldn't do, and they'd ask me if I could do it. You know, it is frustrating that I never had an opportunity to sit down and chat with Mr. Bellmeister. Uh, I would have loved to sit down and talk with him. Um, even when he took his own life in Canada and he had left a note, the note never mentioned uh, the victims or and uh, being sorry for anything that he had done. He apologized to his family, but he didn't, uh, you know, communicate anything to the victims. And that was, I would love to have had an opportunity to speak with him, obviously. <laughs>